So of course the first thing I did today was write a to-do list. I was using my academic planner here. I was genuinely really excited for today because I haven't had a proper study day for ages. So first of all was breakfast, of course, and I made porridge and had green tea with that. Porridge I maintain is the best fueling breakfast. I always feel best when I've had porridge and I topped mine today with some brown sugar and raspberries and I was reading As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson as I was eating. As you can see, I just spilled green tea on me as I brought this upstairs, so I'm going to quickly get changed. Good morning, it's Ruby and today I'm going to be doing a good old fashioned study with me. I have got quite a lot of preparation work that I want to do ahead of starting at Oxford. So I recently received my module specifications, which have lots of recommendations for pre-reading, things we should look at before we start, the text that we're going to be covering, and I really want to try and get a lot of this done before term starts, so that I'm not run too much off my feet. So that's my plan. <laughs> I don't know how much of the course I'll manage to get through in the summer, but we'll see. Today I've made a to-do list as you saw, and I'm going to get started with something very simple, very easy, which is just writing a play summary and doing some initial research into the Jew of Malta. Oh, and I'm reading As Good As Dead at the moment, and it's so good. I've been wanting to read this for ages. I know, I know, this is semi-controversial, but I really just find play summaries like this useful. So I filled out the note-taking notion template that I showed in my most recent video and so as part of that I was doing relevant context research, making a list of characters, looking at author biography, performance contexts, printing cultures and this template worked really well. I also just read this short article on policy in the Jew of Malta. And then with that foundational grounding knowledge, I actually read the book. I downloaded it on Kindle. Personally, I like to read my set texts on Kindle when I can because I love the note-taking feature. It's just so useful being able to add your notes directly linked to the text and also colour coding. I particularly like this quote, by the way. Um, so this took me a couple of hours. I've just finished reading The Jew of Malta and I'm now gonna go downstairs I think and get another cup of tea. It's been an hour and I've just spent that time writing some of my novel because I was really in the mood for it. Today was meant to be a study day but I'm also working to a deadline for my agent next week and I suddenly had an idea for it and was really in the mood so I set an hour long timer and I just um, rewrote one of my chapters. So anyway, now I'm gonna go downstairs and get a coffee. The next thing I'm going to do is read from the Cambridge Introduction to Shakespeare, just to kind of brush back up on my Shakespeare knowledge. I've gone through the index and I've used these little sticker dots to mark the sections that I'm maybe less familiar with and would just like to brush up on ready for the new year. So this book, as the name suggests, is published by Cambridge University Press and unbelievably, Today's video is actually sponsored by Cambridge University Press. So as always this year, Cambridge University Press is launching the Good Student Initiative, which basically encourages us as students to take proactive steps to prepare for the new academic year. I cannot stress enough how important and valuable supplementary reading is, both academically with your degree, but also personal learning. Investing time in reading and research can show such massive results because it can help us form really strong foundations for our learning, but also reading widely will help us to think more synoptically because we've got more material to draw on and we can start to make those links between materials. If you've watched my content before, you'll know that one of my biggest tips for studying and doing well academically is reading outside of your syllabus and reading extra material. Starting with one of these books and reading one of these books ahead of term can be a really great place to start. The three books that I've got are the Cambridge Introduction to Shakespeare, the Cambridge Encyclopedia of Language, and then the final one I've got here, the Cambridge Introduction to Creative Writing. This one is for pleasure. Oh, I like this. I've just opened it to this. 
Cambridge University Press offers a fantastic selection of academic texts and if you want to buy a book then you can use my code ruby20 to get 20% off your order. But anyway, I'm now going to get to reading this and I will put you on time lapse. So one of the things I read in this book was the doubling on the early modern stage which I think was my favourite section. Um, I found that really interesting and in terms of how I was annotating as well, so because I do get a lot of questions about how I annotate, so sometimes I will use pencil, so as you can see I'm underlining some things in pencil, but I like to keep a sticky note beside me and I will just jot down all of the key points and the most important bits and then I will put it at the beginning of the chapter, kind of like a summary for myself when I go back to it and um, it works really well, it's a great system for me. It's quarter past 12 and I can't tell you how much fun I'm having today. I haven't had a proper study day in ages and it's making me so excited to get back to university and to start studying properly. Um, I've just had such a good day and I'm in such a good mood. I'm going to have lunch soon because it's past 12 but first I'm just going to write up summaries of all of the cantos in book one of The Fairy Queen. We are studying Spencer's The Fairy Queen in the second week of term. As I said earlier, I like having summaries. It makes discussion easier in seminars. That's all done. I've just got a character list and also these summaries. And then, yes, I was about to go and have lunch, but I wanted to read another canto of The Fairy Queen because I was excited to read more of it after having written the summaries. So I just took some notes on one of the cantos. I've read and taken notes on another canto of this, and I'm now gonna go and have some lunch. I've still got quite a while left of this book, but I'm just taking it slowly because I'm really enjoying it. Now I'm just gonna make some lunch. This is a courgette that we grew in the garden, and we have so many courgettes at the moment. It's massive, it's more like a macro to be honest. For lunch I just made some roasted vegetables in the air fryer, a side salad, and then made some guacamole to have on toast. I added some artichokes too because I'm loving marinated artichokes at the moment. Here's my lunch. Avocado toast and then like tahini and vegetables for the other side. thing I'm going to do is start on the course preparation. This is the module that I'm most excited about. I'm going to try and find an early modern secretary hand document and then transcribe it um, just to get back into the swing of transcribing early modern documents. It's on my computer and it's just randomly powered off which is slightly concerning so I might just leave it because it might need to cool down or something. I'm going to go downstairs and use my iPad to find a transcription instead. So while I gave my computer a little bit of space, I went downstairs, put on a record, I was listening to some Tchaikovsky actually, which is why I'm playing Tchaikovsky as the background music to this as well. But I found this website, which is an introduction to early modern handwriting and transcription, and so I just did one of the transcriptions from here. I would actually really recommend this website, um, it's been really great for brushing up on my transcriptions because I haven't done it for a while. And I also printed off um, this guide to the early modern secretary hand alphabet to stick in my everyday notebook for when I go back to university. Because I just think this could be really useful to have on hand and it was definitely handy when I was doing this transcription um, because some of the letters just do look very different. Um, and I also added some notes to help me when doing transcription because, for example, there are two versions of the letter S depending on where it appears. And I also wrote down some common abbreviations. Again, I just thought it'd be useful. Then I did this very short transcription. It was only one verse, um, but I'm just planning on doing this little and often and it was definitely useful. This is what I tried translating and this is what I came up with. This was my first go, and then I tried clearing it into something which made more sense. So I marked it when I was done. I did have some errors, but that's fine. Something to work on. And then I watched this um, introductory video to using the Bodleian, and I 
got started on reading this excellent book. Uh, I read this on Palego actually. This was so good. It was basically an introduction to early modern bookmaking and printing and I learned so much. It went through typesetting and the paper that was used, title pages, illustrations. There was just so much and I took so many notes and I would highly recommend this book. How cool is this? I really want to go outside, so I'm gonna go on a run and so I will see you in a little bit. I'll probably take about 45 minutes off as a break and then get back to studying. If you watched my last video, you'll have seen that I ordered a new Apple Pencil and this came today so I set it up, which was really easy actually, you just had to magnetically attach it. I've had a shower and I'm just going to have some blueberry cake that I made yesterday with some coffee and read some more of my book before getting back to work. I didn't end up reading, I actually ended up working on my novel instead. I was just writing some bits in my notebook outside. I might actually put on like a Pomodoro style timer. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is read some critical essays that we've been recommended for the B course. Um, we've been asked to read at least one from this list. I've just finished that book and now I'm going to read this essay, which is also recommended. And after that, um, I went down and cooked dinner. Today I made a miso sweet potato puree, garlic broccoli, roasted courgettes, Moroccan style cannellini beans and homemade tzatziki. It's properly golden hour at the moment. How beautiful is that lighting? I kind of want to go outside but I've got therapy in 10 minutes, so I'm not going to. Honestly, the dinner I made tonight was amazing, if I do say so myself. I'm actually in charge of cooking dinner in my family, and it's always fun to be able to experiment with new things, so this one was actually very successful. I'm also really happy with how much of my to-do list I've got through, and I also managed to write a chapter of my book, which I didn't think I'd managed to do today, and also do some planning for my book, so um, I'm gen uh, generally just very happy, and there's a massive wolf. So then finally, after my therapy session, I was doing some writing, working on my novel, um, and I was, again, just feeling so inspired and so motivated for this, and that is the absolute best feeling when you're writing. So I had the best evening, and I finished writing at about 11. I just completely lost track of time. And then I lost track of time reading, and I ended up reading 400 pages of Holly Jackson's book, and I don't even know what time I turned off the light because I was too scared to check the time. But that brings me to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I had a wonderful day, honestly. Thank you again to Cambridge University Press for sponsoring today's video, and I hope that you have more than just a productive week. This is just a quick reminder that the academic planner is now live. I really have tried to design the perfect planner for students with everything that I've ever wanted in the planner and I am genuinely so excited to share it with you. It is available on my website Pumpkin Productivity and we do ship worldwide. Um, there'll be a link down below in the description box. Just as always, thank you so much for all of your support and for giving me the opportunity to design and share this planner with you.